need more line in and outputs for your studio, the Audiofuse X8 in and out from Arturia are here to increase your channel count via ADAT. And let's have a closer look at them. Hey, Julian Kraus here, and with me I got the X8 in and X8 out, which as the name suggests, give you an additional 8 channels via ADAT connection with any audio interface that supports ADAT. The X8 out has an additional trick up its sleeve in the form of DC coupled outputs, but more on that later. For full transparency, Arturia did send me both devices for me to test, but all measurements and opinions in this video are my own, and Arturia does not get to see the video before it goes live. Let's start out with the hardware. The first thing I noticed is the build quality. These are some really solid feeling devices, and when we have a look inside in a second, you will also see the housing is a really chunky piece of aluminum, and I can imagine that this is not too cheap to produce. All in all, that makes the X8 in and X8 out feel like really premium devices, and I have to confess, I really dig the matte black look with the orange accents. On that note, there's some more orange stuff found at the bottom, and these are some brackets which allow you to screw two X2 devices together so that they will fit neatly into a 1U rack mount. That's because 1X8 is exactly half 1U slot wide. Pretty clever, and this also goes nicely with Arturia's own 16 rig, which happens to be also 1U rack mountable. On the front of the X8 in you get a couple of buttons for some simple controls. With the left and right arrow you can select the channel you want to control. The pad button does what you would expect, it attenuates the incoming signal in case it is too strong. This is great to have, although I must mention that there is no further gain control on the inputs, so these are really designed to be fed line level signals. If you want to run microphones into the X8 in, you will need some additional preamps. With the line button, you can link two channels together to control them simultaneously. Then you can also find a button which lets you choose the sample rate for 44.1 up to 96 kHz, and a button to toggle between word clock or internal clock as the clock source. For each channel you also get an LED which changes color based on the incoming signal level. Not as accurate as a proper level meter, but it gives you a quick signal indicator and you can see your levels in the software with much more detail, which I will also show a little later. And lastly you get an on off button, that's always appreciated. Although one thing which could have been even cooler is that the X8 would turn on and off automatically with the connected interface but I think that might not be possible with the ADAT control. On the back side, you will find eight balanced TRS line level inputs, a BNC connection for word clock sync, and two optical toslink connections to transfer the audio. If you stick with sample rates up to 48 kHz, one connection is enough for all eight channels. If you use higher sample rates, you will need to connect both outputs, and then four channels are sent per connection. Lastly, there is a 15 volt DC input, which is needed to power the X8 in, and the power supply is also provided. Jumping over to the X8 out, you can find less controls. On the front, you only get a selection on how you want to sync it with your interface, either word clock or ADAT, and there is an on off switch. Again, nice. On the back side, you will find eight balanced outputs, which I mentioned in the beginning are DC coupled. For listening to music, this is really not needed, but it can become really useful when you use devices like control voltage synthesizers. These devices can be directly controlled with the output of the X8 out. DC coupling on outputs is definitely more of a specialty feature and relatively rare, and if you need it, this might be a big selling point for you. Like on the X8 in, the X8 out features a BNC word clock connection and two ADAT toslink connection. Again, for lower sample rates, one connection is enough to send all channels, but with higher sample rates you will need to use two cables. The locking 15 volt barrel jack is the same as on the X8 in, and with the X8 out there's also a power supply provided. As someone who is also in the possession of a 16 rig, I would have also liked to see some kind of a splitter, which would allow the usage of just one power supply to drive the 16 rig and X8 devices, which in turn would have also reduced the cable clutter. As mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of the build quality with the all metal housing. If we have a look inside, you can see that it is a solid construction, and you can see that the X8 in uses an AKM AK5578EN analog to digital converter, which I consider to be a top tier converter. The X8 out uses an ESS ES9080, which again is a high quality converter. This gives us a bit of a glimpse at the audio quality that we can expect. So let's have a look at a couple of measurements, starting with the X8 in. The frequency response of the X8 in is essentially ruler flat until it falls off due to the anti-aliasing filter. That's how it's supposed to be. In the audible range, essentially all frequencies are recorded equally well Nothing more to say. This is obviously great. Dynamic range is the ratio of the strongest signal that the interface can capture compared to its noise floor. And you want this essentially to be as high as possible 
to end up with minimal noise. Here I've measured 118.7 dBA and this puts the X8 in firmly in the top performing category. This is likely more dynamic range than you will ever need. Excellent performance. When we have a quick look at the THD plus N versus amplitude graph, we can also see that distortion is negligibly low and single distortion components are below minus 120 decibels, which is completely inaudible. So distortion is most definitely not an issue with the X8 in, which is once again an excellent performance. Now let's quickly check the X8 out. Out. Frequency response wise, we can see a ruler flat line. It doesn't get much better than that. The dynamic range is unsurprisingly very high and I measured 120 dBA. This pretty much guarantees that you will never hear any noise from the X8's output. I think the word I'm searching for is excellent. Now, so far this review has been purely positive. There has to be a downside, right? Well, there is one thing that I stumbled across while testing, but before I tell you, I want to urge you to have a look at the pinned comment below, because this issue might be fixable with a firmware update. And if that's the case, the whole next segment is irrelevant and you can completely skip it. But as of the making of this review, the issue is present. What's the issue? You see, the X8 out uses a digital to analog converter, which can switch between two ranges, depending on the amplitude of the signal that is played. This gives a strong output performance when it is needed for loud signals, while simultaneously keeping the noise down when low signals are played. You can see where the DAC chip switches from one range to the other in the THD plus N versus amplitude graph. I've done excessive listening tests and to my ears the switching behavior is inaudible with full range music and I have yet to find anyone who says otherwise. You can see that in the middle to high frequencies it's a quick change in ranging, whereas with low frequencies it seems the chip is not quite sure whether it should go with a lower or higher range which results in some distortion until it settles back down again. This means that when you are listening to audio that is primarily low frequency, there is a chance that you will hear some distortion when the signal crosses over from one range to the other. How audible is this? Well, I'll let you decide. Here's an audio sample recorded from the output of the X8. <laughs> Now this is pretty much a worst case scenario, pure bass frequency and smoothly varying amplitude. I must say that with full range music this issue is non-existent, as the switch in ranging is pretty much instant. So I would argue that in the majority of cases you will never come across this issue. Still it is there and it can be heard especially when listening to stuff like bass or kick drums. The issue with this issue really is that it is so inconsistent. You might be totally fine and never hear it with the stuff that you are listening to. Or you might come across it straight away if you monitor audio that is mostly low frequency. I have relayed this finding to Arturia and they are looking into it, but no promises have been made. Hopefully there can be a fix for that. Again, follow me on Twitter, link is in the description, for updates and also check the pinned comment below. Moving on, I want to quickly talk about the usage of the X8 in and out. As you might imagine, they are very straightforward to use. You can simply connect them to an ADAT capable interface Maybe choose the clock source and sample rate and off you go. It's as easy as that. And that's one thing I like about the X8 in and out. Their simplicity. ADAT is also pretty universal, so you can connect it to, for example, an Audion, Focusrite or Moto interface and these devices will simply show up as additional channels. How exactly they show up depends on the interface you use and in case of Arturia's own 16 rig, you can see the additional channels under the ADAT section and here you have a nice overview of all the levels. Let's close this out with some pros and cons. The first positive thing I want to highlight here is the build quality. The X8 devices are built like a tank and feel like quality devices. It's also nice to see a word clock on both devices to get proper synchronization. I like that the outputs of the X8 out are DC coupled, which allows you to use the output to send control voltage to synths and other stuff. And I find it quite practical that the X8 devices can be combined in pairs to fit into a 1U rack. As potential downsides or something to keep in mind on depending on how you look at it, is that the X8 in does not have any gain adjustments, so the 8 inputs are purely line level inputs. Another point is that the X8 in and out do not automatically power up or down with the connected interface, so you will always have to manually hit the power switch on each of them. The X8s also only support ADAT and are not compatible with SPDIF. Probably not a huge deal as most interfaces support ADAT these days, but something to be aware of. 
With these points out of the way, what's my verdict? Well, for the exit out, it's complicated to give a definitive answer, as for me, it's all hinging on a small issue. Before I say anything else, please again check the pinned comment and follow me on Twitter for updates, because if the issue that I'm about to mention has been fixed, this would completely change my view on the X8 out. That's because the X8 out has a huge potential. It's all there. Nice build quality, flood frequency response, excellent dynamic range, and that's why it's even more unfortunate that this otherwise great performance is overshadowed by a small issue. As mentioned, as of making this video, there is the issue that when playing back sound that is primarily low frequency, there is the potential to hear some distortion. While I would argue that in the overwhelming majority of cases this will never be an audible issue, there are definitely some scenarios where it will become apparent and it can be quite annoying. So if this can be resolved, the X8 out is a great device, but until then it's pretty hard for me to recommend it straight away and you will have to decide if this is a potential issue for you or not. For the X8 in, the verdict is super easy. It's an excellent device. Flat frequency response, more dynamic range than you will ever need, excellent build quality, what more do you want? Yeah, that's the X8 series, a simple solution to a simple problem. Need more channels? Just add them via ADAT. Alright, that's it for now. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.